Down through the years of my ministry, my life has been tremendously motivated by great missionary mottos. And I want to give you one of my most cherished mottos, if I may now. I put it in the form of a question. Why? Why should anyone hear the gospel twice before everyone has heard it once? Years ago, I went through the Bible to see if I could remain in my own country in an ordinary pastorate and still satisfy God and carry out the post-resurrection commands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I read the word of God, I found such expressions as these. All nations, the gospel must be given to all nations. Every creature, the gospel must be preached to every creature. Every kindred and tongue and tribe and people, the gospel must be proclaimed to every kindred and tongue and tribe and people, the uttermost part of the earth. And as I read those expressions, I asked myself just one simple question. Do all nations live in Canada? Is there any nation living beyond the boundaries of Canada? If all nations live in Canada, then I can settle down in my own country, never cross the boundaries, and still satisfy God and carry out the post-resurrection commands of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if one nation lives beyond the boundaries of Canada, then I am in duty bound to leave my country and go with the gospel of Jesus Christ to that one nation. I left my home. I traveled between three and 4,000 miles to the Indians up near Alaska. And there I settled down among those Indians in British Columbia, right on the borders of Alaska, and preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. I batched it alone among those Indians. I was the only white man living on the reserve, and I was just 18 years of age. After spending a little over a year among the Indians, at last realizing that I needed more education, more preparation, I left my Indian mission field, and I returned to civilization. Then I settled down to six years of theological studies. And after graduating from seminary, and after having been ordained to the gospel ministry, then I had to face the issue again. And this time I applied to the Foreign Missionary Board, and I asked to be sent as a missionary to India. My application was very carefully, very prayerfully considered. I was summoned to appear before the board. I did so, and I answered all the questions that they asked. And then I settled down to wait for the verdict. Finally, it came in the form of a letter. I had been flatly, definitely, and finally rejected for missionary work. The board considered that I was not built of missionary material, and therefore I was turned down. Then I realized that there was only one thing left for me to do. If I could not go myself as a missionary, I would have to send out substitutes. If I could not go myself as a missionary, I would have to send out substitutes. Never will I forget when I placed the first five substitutes on the platform and challenged the congregation to send them out. Before long, the five became 10. Then the 10 became 20. In due time, the 20 became 40. Then the 40 became 100. After a while, the 100 became 150. Then the 150 became 200. In due time, the 200 became 250. And then last year, the 250 became 300. And now, we have an army of substitutes out there in the regions beyond, under 27 different faith missionary societies, working on 30 different foreign fields. Our substitutes, our representatives, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in our stead and in our room. But I wasn't the question, why go to the foreign field when there's so much to be done here at home? Let me answer that question by asking four other questions. First, why did David Livingston leave Scotland and go to Africa when there was still so much to be done in Scotland? Why? And why did William Carey leave England when there was still plenty to be done in England and go to India? Why? And why did Judson leave the United States of America and go to Burma when there was still so much to be done in America? Why? And why did the Apostle Paul 
leave his own homeland, Palestine, when the people of Palestine had not even heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why did he leave Palestine and go to Europe, to your forefathers and my forefathers, in order to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why? I can give you the answer, and I give it in the words of the Bible. The field is the world. I say, the field is the world. Did you ever see a farmer? Did you ever in your life know a farmer to settle down in one little corner of his field and spend a lifetime working that one little corner and leaving the rest of the field? Never. The farmer works the entire field. He works the whole of the farm. The United States of America is only a fence corner. Great Britain is only a fence corner. If you have given all your money for Christian work in the United States of America, then you have been working in a fence corner. 